Masai Games released Clock Tower for the Super Famicom in Japan in 1995. However, this review is for the re-release of the classic made in 1997 for the PlayStation renamed Clock Tower, The First Fear. Clock Tower is another series that suffers from sequelitis, in that the Clock Tower games after the first one get worse and worse with every iteration of the game. I thought I would save you the trouble and go back to the grassroots of the series when Clock Tower was still a proper horror game. The version of uh, Clock Tower I first played was on the PlayStation 1, and uh, you take control of Jennifer Simpson, who is the lead character among a group of orphan friends. All of the friends have been taken in by a wealthy eccentric recluse named Mary Barrows that lives in the mansion known as the Clock Tower, named after its most predominant feature. Clock Tower is a 2D point-and-click adventure style game where the player controls a cursor to direct the main character, Jennifer Simpson, and to give commands such as investigating objects or opening doors, just like any other adventure game. The interface is pretty similar to a 1990-era computer adventure game, but it's simplified to work better with a gamepad like on the Super NES or the PlayStation. Primarily, the player only moves Jennifer left and right through the environment, although there are some rooms and areas in which an action requires Jennifer to step into the background or interact with an object in the foreground. The intro cinema begins with all the characters walking towards the mansion and getting settled in the main foyer. A maid goes to find uh, Mrs. Barrows, but eventually takes a long while, and this is when you know things are going to get bad. Your character Jennifer leaves the room, and upon leaving, hears a blood-curdling scream from the main foyer. You go back to find one of your friends murdered by a demonic-looking boy wielding a giant pair of scissors. From here, you are introduced to the series' main antagonist, Bobby Barrows, but also known as Scissorman. The Scissorman is the pinnacle bad dude, a straight-up murderer with a troubled past, and for the rest of the game he plays a vital role in both the gameplay and the horror aspect of Clock Tower. Clock Tower is unique in two other adventure games in that it features a stalker pursuing the main character. This delays all puzzle solving and requires you to run in order to find a hiding space or an object to fend off or avoid the attacker. If you're directly confronted by Scissor Man, you engage in a panic phase in the game and maybe outside of it, and you must repeatedly pound on the panic button to struggle with the attacker. If Jennifer is low on health or the player does not tap the panic button fast enough, Scissor Man will attack you, and you'll be presented with a game over screen. Although the game refers to it as Jennifer's Hell, the color of the background where a character portrait is shown represents her current fear level. Blue means she is in a calm state, while yellow means she is startled, orange meaning she is alarmed, and finally red, where you will begin to panic. In red, you're more likely to be attacked during a direct confrontation with Scissor Man. And additionally, while running away from Scissor Man, there is a chance that Jennifer might trip up over her feet, making her vulnerable if Scissor Man is close by. Many of Scissor Man's appearances are triggered by the player inspecting certain objects, but there are also some cases in which he will come out of a hiding place and chase Jennifer as soon as she enters a room. The object of the game is to, wait for it, discover the mysteries of the mansion, and in doing so, you will also find out Mary Burrow's true intentions of gathering all the orphans at her house. So why is Clock Tower on the list? Uh, Clock Tower can be considered to be one of the pioneers of the survival horror genre. It was also one of the first to incorporate multiple endings, and actually contains more endings than most modern day games. This is important because unlike other adventure games, you don't have to follow a strict path of puzzle A, then puzzle B, etc and it gives your actions some consequence. If you fail to find a certain person or, and save them, or pass a certain puzzle without solving it, this results in diff different things happening at the end of the game. Having a stalker villain throughout the game also injects pure fear both into your character, and this transfers right to you as a player, because I remember hammering on that panic button to save my life from those giant scissors. Comprising itself of both old and new horror game techniques, Clock Tower is definitely something to check out, but always be ready to run.